If you want more eyes on your business and more sales in your bank account, social media marketing is the way to go. In this video, let's talk about how to market your business on social media. Here's the thing. I want to let you in on a big secret. There are three main objectives to keep in mind with marketing your business on social media. And if you don't have this, then your strategy is broken. Then I'm going to share with you three proven tactics for landing clients, growing your business, getting clients that even you love to work with and that love to pay you. What are the objectives of social media marketing? I am so glad you asked. There's three of them. You ready for it? Lead generation, lead nurture and lead conversion. If you don't have those, then your business is broken and you're just creating content for the sake of content. And you're going to keep running on this hamster wheel and you and your business deserve way more than that. Every single piece of content that you create to market your business on social media should be reaching and accomplishing one of these three or all of these three lead generation, lead nurture, and lead conversion. Every single piece of content should be reverse engineering what it is that you have to sell. And how is that piece of content either generating, nurturing, or converting? Sometimes they can even be leading to all three. For example, I might have a post where I'm telling a story about uh, a strategy that I use that, that changed my life, that changed my business, that helped me to make more money. And I could say, click the link below to, to get access to this thing. I'm going to give it to you for free today. That post, that piece of content, because it has a strong call to action is going to generate a lead because they can click through that call to action and they can join my email list, which then they are going to be nurtured. But even if I back up to that post itself, where I'm telling a really engaging story that I've created it with the strategy in mind that I want to give them this epiphany that they walk away with thinking, Oh, that's the way that I can now also get this result. It's nurturing them before I've even generated that lead. And then the conversion comes on the back end after they've opted into my email list. And maybe I have a nurturing email sequence that then brings them towards purchasing, you know, a consulting call with me or purchasing one of my courses. And that's the conversion. So think about how every single piece of content is accomplishing one or all of those three lead generation, lead nurture and lead conversion. I would recommend you actually write that down on a sticky note, put it beside your computer so that you keep that in mind and never forget that when you're creating content, because we are not here to create content for the sake of content. That's like throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks. We're not about that. We are doing this intentionally to grow our businesses, right? Right. After hearing that, I want to know what you think about that. Have you ever thought about that before? Have you unintentionally been just creating content for the sake of content? Or have you been using these three? Let me know in the comments below. Having an effective social media marketing strategy is so important. Why? Because this isn't a hobby. This is a business. We're not doing this just for fun. Although your business should be fun. We want to be creating something that is going to give us an ROI, a return on investment, a return on energy, a turn on the money that we invest, a return on the time that we invest. Ideally, we want to be able to reach more people. And you know, it's kind of funny when I hear people talk about, uh, you know, get rich quick schemes, I'm not trying to help you get rich slowly either. So when you have a strategy, that's going to be the fastest path to cash, to growing your business, to reaching more people and making the impact that you want to make. And social media marketing can be one of the most effective ways because our audiences are on social media all the time. And if we know how to utilize that to reach them, to give them value, and then to lead gen, lead nurture and convert them into a customer, that's how we're going to grow. And that's how we're also going to be able to make our impact in the world by allowing them to grow in the ways that our products and services provide. So just posting, just creating content, spray and pray, putting it out, the throwing spaghetti at the wall. That's not a strategy. Again, go back to lead generation, lead nurture and lead conversion. That is your strategy. So even if you're brand new to business, you might be thinking, well, how do I create a strategy? If, if I've never done this before, I got to test my content. Absolutely. But you're also going to test your content with intention as a new business or an existing business. These following tips are going to be really important for you to make sure that you have them in place. First of all is your branding so that people can recognize you. If I were to say to you right now, uh, just do it. What does that make you think of Nike, right? If I uh, showed you these golden arches, what would that make you think of McDonald's, right? They have these images or they have this slogan that is recognizable all over the world. Think about how you can create your branding to be memorable for your audience, something that they resonate with, something that they get a feeling about. I mean, I don't know about you, but I think about Nike and I think about 
athleticism. I think about excellence. I think about hard work and determination and perseverance. I think about McDonald's and I think about Happy Meals. I loved Happy Meals as a kid. It made me happy. It was this like fun experience with my brother, my little brother, or, or my parents or my friends, you know, the birthday parties and the jungle gyms and stuff. It's a fun experience for me. What do you want your business to be about? And how can you make sure that everything you put out on social media is aligned with that branding? The other piece of creating your branding is going to be the stories that you tell. So I recommend and for every client that I ever work with or for anyone that ever listens to these videos to create a story inventory. Write that down, story inventory. What is your story? You have multiple stories. You have your origin story of how you came to be who you are today. What was the thing that, that encouraged you to grow or start this business that you have? And what are the pivotal moments along the way that taught you lessons or shaped you into who you are today? I would actually recommend having a, a Google Doc or a huge notebook where you just brain dump all of your stories. This might be childhood lessons. It might be experiences with your family. It might be you discovering your expertise or your skills or what it was that encouraged you to start this business that you have today. And anytime you create a piece of content, you can go to your story inventory and share one of those stories in your content that people are going to resonate with. The reason why I urge you to tell stories in your content is because stories stand the test of time. Stories have been brought through from generations to generations. The things that carry on our culture or generations of wisdom is the stories that we tell and that we carry on. And as you tell these stories, people resonate with them. They, they're captivated. They, they move in closer. They want to hear them. Think about your favorite movies that you love to watch. You're following a storyline. You're connecting with the protagonist, the main character. You're on the edge of your seat, watching them as they go through their trials and their tribulations. And by the end of the movie, why do you feel that adrenaline rush or sometimes that like serotonin or dopamine hit that you just love this character that you've fallen in love with over the last like hour and a half to two hours? Well, it's because you've watched their journey from start to finish. It's that you watch them hit rock bottom. You watch them climb their way up. And because of that, you cheer louder when they win. Whether that means they got the girl or landed the dream job or, or won the race, you got to see what they went through and you resonate with them, whether you've been in the same experience or that you can relate to something similar that you've experienced. When you can share that through your content, that's going to create this undeniable connection with your audience. You know, I see a lot of new businesses focus too much on fun facts and tidbits instead of going deep into the stories. When I first started my business, I was a social media manager and uh, I was also a full-time dental hygienist. I was, that was one of my first jobs is I was doing social media for the dental office I worked at. And sure, I could have made posts about how many times a day to brush your teeth and, and fun facts about cavities and fluoride and stuff, but that's not the stuff that makes people stop scrolling. That's not the stuff that captivates them and makes them think about it for, for days on end. The stuff that makes them stop with their doing and pay attention is the story. So I would find stories from the people at our office, or I would make up a funny story about our office goldfish. And that's the thing that gets a reaction. So think about that as you're creating your content. There's nothing wrong with sharing those fun facts and those tidbits, but can you tie it into a story that people will actually stop the scroll and pay attention to? Now, before I tell you about my proven tactics to landing your dream clients through social media, make sure that you hit that subscribe button. If you're an entrepreneur and you're looking to up level and grow and scale your business, make sure to subscribe because I'm putting out videos like this every week. Okay, how to land your dream clients on social media. I have three tactics that I'm gonna share with you. The first one, is a strong call to action at the end of every single video. Remember when I was giving the example about lead generation, maybe I tell this really great story and I segue it into giving them the answer to that if they click the link below and they get the PDF or the ebook or they watch the next video or, or they sign up for a webinar, whatever that thing is, that next step that I want them to take by telling them what to do, by inviting them, that is a call to action. That's me saying, here's the next step that you can take to get more value from me. Click the link below. It's a strong call to action. When I first started creating content on social media, I didn't know what that was. I didn't know that I'm supposed to tell them what to do next. I think I kind of assumed like, well, if they like the video, maybe they'll subscribe or maybe they'll reach out to me. Maybe they'll email me. You can't assume that. 
because they don't know that they're supposed to do that or they don't have a reason to. You have to give them a reason to act. So having a strong call to action, telling them where to go, that's where you also get to actively pursue that relationship. It's like being on a date with somebody. If you were on a date and you wanted to have that second date, I mean, sure, you can play hard to get, but they might also be thinking, did, did that even go well? Do they like me? Should this go anywhere? And then what if that's like a misconnection? Instead, just ask for the second date. Ask them to take action. Click the link below, join your email list and continue that relationship. Speaking of dating, the next concept that I love to share is know, like, trust. Your audience, to be able to take that action, needs to know you, like you, and trust you. And I use this dating analogy to create that image for you that you're not just going right in for the proposal. You're nurturing your audience through this valuable content so that when you do have that call to action, it's a no brainer because they know you, they like you, they trust you. If you didn't take the effort to date your audience, it would be the equivalent of someone coming up to you on the street and being like, hey, wanna get married? You're like, I don't know you. You don't know my last name. You haven't taken me to dinner. You gotta get to know your audience and they need to get to know you. And that's by creating valuable content. Now that's not to say that you can't have calls to action your content right from the get go, but that you lead with value before you bring them to a call to action. And the way we do that is through the third tactic that I like to call the 80-20 rule. Now this can be 80% and 20% in one piece of content, or it can be 80-20 in your whole content structure. So an example is, you know, the, the post example that I gave you before where I told a story and that's like 80% of the post and 20% of the post was the call to action. So I led with value. I told them a story that hopefully tugged at their heartstrings or showed them the path and, and painted that, that picture of what life could be like if they follow this strategy that I'm about to tell them when they click the link below. So having the 80-20 rule is gonna be really important for building that know, like, trust factor, dating your audience, and leading to the call to action in a way that isn't abrasive, like going straight for the proposal. So remember, all in all, lead with lead generation, lead nurture, and lead conversion. When you have that in mind with every piece of content you create, that's what's going to boost brand loyalty and sales. If you wanna learn more about creating content that converts into cash flow and builds a raving audience for you. I have a training on just the thing. If you click the link below, you can get free access to my next training. I'll see you there.